Hey everybody, it's Scott Detweiler. What I thought I would do today is go through how I use Lightroom for my workflow. Um, I use a couple different applications in my workflow, but Lightroom is, is probably the core to it. Uh, not because of the reasons that you may think, but because of its method for organizing things. A lot of the other applications that are out there, Capture One is going to be my main one, uh, are much better RAW converters than Adobe Camera Raw. Uh, at least in, in my line of work and what I like to shoot, I find it to be far superior. However, from a workflow perspective, it doesn't fit me very well unless I want to have eight copies of the same file laying around. Uh, and it also doesn't know how to read TIFF files. So if there are more than one layer, it can't show you the file or even import it. So it's to me, that's a huge weakness in that application. So I really come back to Lightroom time and again. So I want to walk through how I use this. There's a thousand ways to use this application and you can get creative with a lot of it. I thought it would share what I do in case there's some little tidbit of wisdom in there. You're like, oh, I love that idea. I'm going to use that. The main point I want to make with this, though, is how I use keywords, because to me, keywords for this application are killer. And it, there are other applications that are better at keywording, and that's all they do. But uh, I, I tend to come back to Lightroom time and again as my point of departure uh, for when I'm going to retouch and when I'm going to publish. This is really the application I do a lot of that through. So I'm not going to cover raw conversion today because that's a an involved topic and there's a lot with that. So I'm just going to cover Lightroom workflow and I'm not going to walk through retouching and all the basic tools and so on and so forth. I mean, there's a thousand videos on that out there. And although we each have our own little thing we do, um, I want to focus today on organizing for workflow. So the first thing I do when I get a shoot is I bring my cards back and I import them by year. So on my four terabyte drive, I have a Drobo, a wonderful product. Um, I pull all my files in from my cards into folders according to date. So each one will be pulled in automatically according to the date it was shot. Uh, so just make sure your camera has the right time setting on it and you won't have any problems there. Once they're imported, I can then begin the culling process and the sorting process of looking through my files and seeing what it is that I want to work on. So what I do is somewhat simplified. I used to use this whole five star filter thing down here or pick a scale of one to five on each picture. And I find that that was a little laborious, um, especially if you have thousands of pictures to go through. Um, I, I tended to find it just to be too heavy weight. And at the end of the day, I have a lot of pictures that I say I like all of them and they're all five stars. It really doesn't help me that much in the culling process. So what I do is the simple P, U, and X keys. So what those do inside of Lightroom is the P key will mark it as a pick. Uh, the And you get a little white flag down here, uh, which indicates that one is, is a pick. The U key will skip it and remove any existing flags. Uh, so that's nice for just, oh, next, 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 basically. And the X key marks it as rejected. So that would be useful for a blank frame for uh, when you take a picture of your foot. Or if you're, uh, if you, you have a, a very blurry, uh, say, a, just, it's just an unusable frame in some way or so on, I'll hit it as an X. Now, I'm, I'm horrible at culling. I almost keep everything because I figure there's something that in, in those pictures I may want someday and I'm I'm never using it. I mean, I've got years of this stuff that I've never ever used, but for some reason I just feel the need to keep it. Um, I eventually back everything up to Blu-ray and then remove it from the Lightroom catalog. Uh, but once they're on Blu-ray and they're backed up and they're in cold storage, the chances of me going back to them become slim. Now with some of the new smart smart preview capabilities inside of Lightroom, and I'm, I'm not gonna go into that today either, but uh, basically allows you to keep it in the catalog as a, as a shadow of its former self. So you can see the picture, retouch the picture. Then I just need to go find the hard media, bring it in and it'll apply those changes. But I am not gonna go into that, but it's a new feature in Lightroom 5. And I think it, it opens the door for me to actually use some of those cold storage pictures that I've, I've been ignoring. So I'm going to go through the entire thing and I'm just going to bang on the U key or the P key depending on what it is that I found. In some situations I might have uh, some HDR that I've shot for instance. I don't shoot a ton of HDRs. I'm more of a portrait person. Uh, but in the case of this, this asylum there were some wonderful opportunities to shoot HDR. All the previous frames I'll typically mark as a pick just so I can kind of keep them straight. So these would all be marked as picks. Um, so they get the little white flags above them down here. At the end of the day I can come down to the filter bar here and hit pick and it will show me only the pictures that are picked. So, uh, and I I have to be somewhat careful here in what I show you because some of these pictures are not published yet. And I gotta be, um, yeah, I wanna be careful because I, 
and I want them to be published. And if you show them off on here, then they're not going to get published. <laughs> so uh, I'll explain the colors in a moment. But for the most part, I'm talking about here is picking. So out of this, um, I have 82 or 88 pictures that I've sorted now and shown. Uh, that is not my final set because I'm still working on this project. This is kind of a, on my own time type thing. And uh, I, I, I just got to catch up on it. Effectively, is what I'm saying. So I'll go through and I'll mark those for picking. Once I'm done with picking, I'll then set this filter just like I have here and show only the picked pictures. And I'll go through each one and decide whether or not it's the best of its picked pictures. So if there are a lot of pictures that are similar uh, and they're not part of an HDR set, let me find some. Yeah, you know, I could probably just show you these here. So, so I have pictures of Samantha here. So I have there are various poses. I'm going through trying some different things. I like three of these more than some of the other ones. So I will mark those as red and it's just the six key. So I'll just hit six that marks it as red. That means that this is one that I'm going to retouch. It's it's destiny is to be published or something along that line. So I really like it. Now the two on either side of it, um, I didn't like as much, but that doesn't mean that I won't like them someday. I find that I go back to my work and I'm like, oh, I really like that picture. Why didn't I pick it before? I think that's natural and that's part of the process. But I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all my picking. Uh, once they're red, I'll go through and I have a shortcut now for that uh, under the Smart Collections called To Do. And that shows there's 294 pictures that I have that I'm, I want to work on fully retouching those. So it only shows me basically the red the red pictures across all of my archive. So that's an easy way for me to find those. Now, once I pick them and I turn them red, then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them into Camera Raw. And I don't use the Camera Raw here. I use Capture One. And again, I'll go into that another day as to how we do it because it's convoluted because these two applications do not play well together. Uh, but I kind of find a way to do it through TIFF layering and so on. And it's not that hard. It's just something I, I don't want to confuse the subject. I'll go through I'll go through my touching process. When it comes out the other side, I will mark it as purple. So this picture is done. The, the original picture that was red is now blue. Blue are my originals. So I'll say, well, it was a red picture before. I want to keep track of where the original one was. I'll mark it as blue. And you can also do that with color label and then blue. Um, the final ones are purple. So purple ones I know are the ones that are done. Now, I also have another one that are green and those are watermarked. I used to use the watermarking features inside of Lightroom, but it's there. It's probably the single worst part of this entire application. It's just dumb. You have to place each watermark, its location, its opacity, its color is a different watermark. You can't just move it on. Capture One has wonderful watermarking capabilities, but because it can't read a multi-layer TIFF file, you have to flatten everything, create a separate copy just for that to be able to work, which is a pain in the butt as well. So I mean, they're both terrible. Uh, but Lightroom, it was just work because I have uh, web export, I have um, a print export. Each one has its own watermarking for every position. So I ended up with 30 or 40 different exports and it was just, it was dumb. Uh, so what I've done now is I've just started taking the final version with any Lightroom changes, create a copy, watermark it, and then save it and color it green. So I can quickly go and say, give me just the green images and there aren't any on that day. How about this day? Green images. Yes, I have one green image. So it's this one. So the green, the purple, and the blue give me the complete picture of this this picture. So the there's the final without the watermark. Here's the final with the watermark. You can see the watermark here. That's just right here. Here's the final without the watermark. And here's the original. So blue, purple, green. Nice and simple. So if I say I'm just looking for all of my watermarked images for some reason, I can just go give me all the green ones and boom, here they are. I can then choose to export it for web uh, to you know, Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter, or I can say I really want this one for print, in which case I would use the purple one because you don't want a watermark uh, when you print it. Then I'll just export it for for that resolution. So I, I always export for the target media because if it's web, uh, I'm going to want it less sharp than say a print where I want it a little, a little sharper. Uh, depending on the type of paper as well, glossy versus matte, I have different settings for different types of paper uh, and so on. But I, it's the same exact image, so I don't want to have 18 copies of the same 2 gig file laying around, each one destined for different sharpness because of its media type. I want Lightroom to do that for me on demand. So I'll say export this for glossy paper, 
print or for web resolution Facebook because it's going to get ripped apart by Facebook anyway. Or um, like Google Plus, I'll export it as a high res because you can zoom in and out on Google Plus. The pictures look beautiful. Um, I'm a big fan of that platform. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place today, but, but so colors and sorting are, are a very big part of what I do. So I hope that's clear. So let's go on to the next part. So I uh, started with just talking about picking. So we picked, we're just using the flags. You see, these are um, all picked. And these are ones I haven't gone through yet or played with. Uh, some of these are pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to show you all, though, because, again, I do want to get some of these published. The next part, though, the the, the reason we're all here, actually, um, is I have a, a, a method of keywording these that I find to be important. So let me just find, actually, I have to uncheck this, or we're going to get a... Um, we're going to get a subset of pictures and I really don't want to deal. I want to deal with the whole session. So I want to find these. Now I'm not going to zoom in on these because these are, are going to get published and I don't want to give it away. But these are all the same model and she has a wig on for some of these Some she does not. So I'm just going to go through and mark them all. Okay. So these are all the same model. The model isn't indicated over here. It shows these are North America, Tala, trans Allegheny, USA. West Virginia Western. Okay, what's all that mean? When I import things into Lightroom, I do it by um, location. So I'll put in North America, USA, and then break it down by state, city, and then if there's a landmark inside. So this is North America, USA, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, St. Peter and Paul Catholic Church, which is where the movie Dogma was filmed. Uh, so I, I shot in there 227 frames, so I can quickly say, just give me all of those for that landmark and I can get those. Uh, it's a nice way to be able to quickly get to the pictures that you want without having to go build all these custom collection things that people do over here, which I, I completely ignore. Um, I can do the same thing for Trans Allegheny, uh, which is where all these pictures were shot, uh, at 1,343 frames across all, all days. Uh, I also have some studios marked and so on. All right, so what we're talking about now are people. This is where I think Lightroom is a big saver for people that go to group photography shoots. So I love group shoots. I can shoot a tremendous number of models and talent in one day and just walk out with cards full of amazing images. Um, uh, Color Law here in Wisconsin has put on some, some wonderful things in, in Illinois and, and Wisconsin. Uh, we do some in my studio in Germantown uh, from time to time. We just did a tattooed ladies shoot. But the, the problems are the same. I need to know at the end of the day all the talent involved. Uh, were there hairstylists? Were there makeup artists? Were there jewelry? Were there um, other credits? Who is the model? Um, you know, everything. Prop owners, stylists, wardrobe designers. I want to know all that. I'm never going to remember it. So there's a couple reasons for me doing this, but at the end of the day, I had this really cool way of tracking things. So in this situation, um, I know this is, this is Samantha. So I'm going to find Samantha Marie, and I'm going to check the box next to Samantha Marie. Now, if we go in and we look at this keyword, how it's structured, it's a little bit different than you're going to think it is. So I have Samantha Marie, but she's the model. And I'm going to export only the synonym. I'm going to export this. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to look down here, and uh, I'm just going to say for argument's sake that Twig was the wardrobe designer. And if we look at Twig's keyword, it's a very similar wardrobe designer twig. Now you may be thinking this is inside of wardrobe designer. Why don't we just allow wardrobe designer to export as a keyword? And we could, but the order of the keywords is not guaranteed. So I might end up with wardrobe designer, Samantha Marie, and then twig noir after it. And it doesn't make any sense as to who did what, and you can't figure anything out. So I've done it this way to get around Lightroom's jumbling of keywords. At the end of the day, it works though. And I can go up here and see what is this going to export. Model, Samantha Marie, very clear. North America, Tala, Translogy, blah, blah, blah. Wardrobe designer, Twig Noir. So I can quickly know where these are. Now, when I export this picture and I put it uh, as a file, it, as, and we're not talking about Facebook here because Facebook breaks all the rules, there will be metadata attached to these things. In the metadata keywords, you'll be able to see the information about who did what, because these keywords will be attached to that file. So it's very nice when I'm submitting to a publication, for instance, I'll just go into my file explorer, drag the picture into an email, look at the properties for it, copy and paste the keyword section, and I have all my crediting done. 
I don't have to go there and go, okay, I, I got to find the picture of the girl holding the sign that talked about who did her makeup, who did her wardrobe, because those aren't always accurate. Although we, we try and shoot that as the first frame for every new model, sometimes the, the, the form isn't filled out properly. So I don't know who did it. So we post these in secret groups. People comment and say, oh, I did the hair or I did the makeup. I correct my database. So at the end of the day, when I export this file, it's perfect. I know who the makeup artist was. I knew the hairstylist was. I knew where it was shot. I knew the event and so on. So I think using these keywords in this manner, especially for people who shoot group shoots and shoot with a lot of individuals, it's a very cool and easy way to maintain organization. Now I notice there's a lot of zeros in these uh, for frames because when I create a new catalog every year, I import the keywords from the previous year. Uh, I do this because I tend to shoot a lot of models in my area over and over again that come to the same events. Um, I need, meet a lot of new models. Um, I may work with the same hairstylist over and over again. Once you find good talent like that, you tend to hold on to it. Uh, I'm the same way. So I don't delete them because I don't want to have to retype their name again and find it say, oh, well, I've shot with her before. Uh, that's pretty That's pretty neat. Now, when I combine these uh, from time to time, I'll combine all my Lightroom catalogs and create a master catalog. All the keywords are persistent. So I'll see all the ones of Samantha Marie across all the years that I've shot uh, to see whatever images I want to see. So I find that's that's a pretty cool way to organize things. Uh, but I thought I would kind of throw that out there and say this is this is what I have done. This is the way that I think that it's easiest to organize uh, Lightroom catalogs and Lightroom images. Uh, it, it allows me to kind of keep track of what I'm doing from now. I, I could go a little bit farther. And in some cases I have, like I've marked this was an HDR. I don't shoot a lot of HDR, but sometimes I'll say like, what are those five HDR images I shot this entire year? I can click on the arrow next to it and it'll show me all five of those HDR images. So it's an easy way for me to use the keywords to my benefit. It doesn't matter if they're purple. It doesn't matter what color they are. I just happen to have the five HDRs I shot already done and already out there. Uh, so it's a very nice way to quickly sort. So these are major events I've been through. I can click on them and get, again, so show me all 1,342 tile images. Here we are. Uh, and then I can further break it down um, by asking for other keywords to be selected as well. So it's a nice way to say uh, a makeup artist wants um, to see all the all the pictures that maybe we've, we've gotten published together or uh, they're looking for some new work and they do, is there anything pending that you might have that I could use uh, that maybe we haven't seen before? I can look at just that makeup artist and say, well, yeah, I do have a couple red ones uh, that I can get you and I'll go ahead and retouch them and, and get them out to you. Uh, so this is um, the way that I, I organize and I think that uh, it makes a lot of sense. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. Uh, the next video I'll probably do will probably be on uh, raw conversion using Capture One and Lightroom uh, because as I said, they don't play well together, uh, but they do make a great combination, uh, especially if you use this for organization, uh, but use Capture One for uh, the initial raw pass. So uh, take care. And as I said, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment and we'll catch you next time.